I, that's the only mishap. Besides the time I shat my pants because I no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please, oh. do tell. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Spe- speaking of... <laughs> What's that bulge around Silly's ass? Those are depends, baby. Gonna go and do my convention thing. Got my costume, I'm going now. Yeah, we're having a ball. It's Star Trek, y'all. Hey, there's a horror. Welcome to episode five of the Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have special guest John Fleck, the notorious Silic. We'll be answering some more of your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia, and many more things. We'll also be naming my avocado tree. But before we do that, here are our hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Hi, Erica. Hi, guys. How are you doing, love? Oh, yeah. We're naming the tree. We are. That's not code, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Army, uh, hey, buddy. How's your week? Uh, it was off, um, as you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I moped around the house and um, caught up with nothing right. in particular. As I cruised the Caribbean. Yeah, I, uh, yes, you were you were busy on the Star Trek cruise that I was not invited to right. well, again. We'll, we'll figure that one out. Yeah, we will. Yeah. We? Uh, how was it? You had a good time? Oh, it was fantastic. Um, it's great to see friends. It's also one of the things about the cruise that's really, really fun is that as opposed to a traditional convention, you kind of get this... After a day together, calm, Mm -hmm. where you're Mm -hmm. all kind of just interacting with one another and you're not, there's not this sort of race to get the autograph or to see you on the Q&A. It's not cocktail hour for a week. It's cocktail hour Mm -hmm. a week long. (laughs) So Uh, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, Trekkies and Trekkers, welcome back to the pod. This week, to help us suck down some of the captain's bourbon, as uh, dear Erica said, is the fabulous, another incredible Star Trek alum, uh, you'll know him better as the uh, the dastardly Silic. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that I ever saw him in the flesh when we were actually <laughs> shooting the show, right. and we will get to talk about that. Our dear friend John Fleck. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for coming, Thank for coming you. on, Thank buddy. You. Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> it's been 20 years, hasn't it? I mean, we have not seen each other in all that time. You don't? Do you do the conventions? Do you? You know, I did a few conventions and then I stopped doing them. Um, first of all, they weren't asking me to, and I didn't pursue it. So, right. um, well, well, no biggie. I wanted ask you guys did you guys ever have any fans that went a little too far and got your contact information he, well, I, well, I, got, he had I, one. I had a stalker okay i had a Proper. full-on stalker uh-huh. who, who actually wound up writing me a letter with a uh, a, a, a um, red maple leaf that was in my backyard within the envelope <gasps> yeah oh that was, the Gramercy, close, that was the Gramercy House house, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, no. So she I, found I, out I where she where that. he lived, and yeah. But there has, you know, there there is somewhat of a firewall these days in terms of, I guess, with with our technology. But man, she was doing handwritten letters, calling me from pay phones, uh-huh. and and you know, my son was like less than yeah. six months old. It was it was stressful. Yeah, it was I hard. Bet. I bet. Yeah. You know, I did my last one was in Vegas. God. 15 years ago. Mm. And um, I, I remember afterwards, some people say, oh, come have a drink with us, you know, after it. And I went and had a drink. And uh, I won't mention her name, but she took a liking to me and she found me on through Facebook. And then she found my email address. Then she found, oops, my um, my um, my real address. So yeah. I started getting letters that she would like to see me. And stuff well, like it's that. shockingly well, not uh, hard uh-huh. to get your address. I know. I mean, you really. And how long have you been married? <laughs> <laughs> to her, <laughs> she was well off. The, you know. the mother of my children. <laughs> uh, the Lord works in mysterious <laughs> ways. So. Um, I will say this though: yeah. for the most part, though. Um, you know, the fans and the environment that we find ourselves in post-show, they're really quite lovely. Yeah. And, and um, I've met dear friends from from our convention. Indeed. And um, almost all of it has been really a lovely experience. God bless for the most part. No, right. There's absolutely. nothing in the entertainment world that's like this environment that has been created with Star Trek. That's true. With the conventions no. um, and uh, their commitment to us and our commitment, frankly, back to them. Yeah. You know, we, we, we go. But, but if, you, if, if you didn't like it, you right, wouldn't, right, you right, wouldn't right, do it. No, you right. wouldn't. And, uh, you know, obviously John didn't like it much and he doesn't go. Well, <laughs> so we're very lucky to have you, darling. Well, darling, I, I wasn't a series regular. You know, I was a recurring <laughs> guest star. And, you know, there's a, just a certain limit. Oh, I still was jealous of all the words uh, you got to say that in the, episodes where I had to go, yeah, yes, Captain. Oh. No, three bags full, Captain. Trust me. Um, let's just jump into that for a second because I want to talk to you about, uh, about that fearful makeup um, oh, yes. that you had to endure. I mean, I did it once That's for right. one episode. 
and I know of what you speak, it... Um, it was something else. I mean, I, I've said before publicly, uh, come four in the morning when they take that shit off my face right. and you'd stare in that mirror and I just looked like a ravaged mm -hmm. drag queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh -huh. pulled through the hedge backwards. But one good thing is, you know, after doing it so much, I, you know, I'm going to be 71 in May. You look fabulous, by the way. People say you shouldn't say how old you are, but I say, you know, we're age pioneers. You know, we have to go uh -huh. carry yeah. on the Star Trek tradition, go to worlds with it. That, For those of you yeah. only listening in, he literally has the body of a 16-year-old. I do. It's, Here, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you right now. Okay. Uh, but, but I was going to say, you know, at four in the morning when they're taking that stuff, I, I wrote about it in a show once, you, you feel like you're being flayed alive. Yeah. But it's like dermabrasion. I swear I look 20 years younger because of all all that derma and the scrubbing with the alcohol and the brushes. It's pretty you grim. Get, you get raw. After a 12, 14, right. 15 hour day. And then what's it like to be in 12, 14, 15 hour days in that? In that Thank God for meditation. You know, I, I was talking to Erica and Mark, you know, mm -hmm. how just, uh, I, I do transcendental meditation. I just got to tell you, you know, being in that makeup after 12, 13 hours in the skin tight costume, mm -hmm. You know, that you, you can't go to the bathroom unless they zip you out in the back. Anyways, I, I just would lay in the trailer with these giant contact lenses, just keep the clothes and just, met, you know, breathe, breathe. And just because I started to get panicky sometimes. Like, oh, oh, I can't, you know, like take it off, take right, it off. Right. You know how you feel embalmed almost. But right. but hey, um, I, I improved. It was an opportunity to improve my meditation technique. I'll tell you one thing, because yes. I've recently been watching the show again yes. uh, after all these years. And I, I watched that episode. I went in as a Suleban. And I'll say one thing. You know, you, you've ever done mask work as yeah. an actor? Mm -hmm. I suddenly remembered, and I was watching the, the, the brief moment I had as a, a Suleban, and just the body movement was tight. Uh, the, I, frankly, it was, it was one, of, one of my better days on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, wow, that's something to behold, to see that. Uh, well, I'll that say this actors. too, that, you know, when I was doing the show, it took me 10 minutes, maybe, to get... Jeff would spray my face down, put a little, you know, mascara well, on. Well, that was after the two and a half weeks in hair. Oh, I mean, oh, with, the hair, hair. With, the hair. With, the, with the frosted tips. But so, so just after Enterprise, I did a show called Stargate Atlantis, where I was uh, playing somewhat of a like a hybrid monster, and I would have to come. Michael. In, Michael. And I would have to come in at 3.30 in the morning. Not much of a villain's morning. name, but nevertheless, he was quite dastardly. It was very dark. <laughs> but I would come in at like 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning and, you know, be ready for an 8 o'clock shoot. And I wouldn't be anywhere near that character. But as the process went on, as they layered, you know, thing after thing on top of me, it began, the character began to show up. And by the time makeup was done and costume was done, I was locked in. To playing mm. that guy. That's how Meryl Streep works, isn't is it? it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Outward, inward, or whatever. Uh, uh, she's my free pass. Uh, she does yeah. it with accents. Uh, right, right, right. She does her wardrobe of accents and picks her out. Hey, nice work if you can get it. Yeah. But, but did you find any of that? when? Uh, uh, definitely. You know, uh, one reason I played so many, besides sil um, Silic, Silly Silic, uh, I played so many, I think with the mask work, you know, not every actor can do that, uh, you know, because you do have to express a little bit more without being too yes. big with yeah. all that makeup. Right. Physicality. Yes. Yeah. And, and I remember the um, one of the episodes in Star Trek I was working with, um, the director, but he he told me as an alien, he said, always keep your head down a little bit so it opens your eyes. He ah. says, that's, you know, especially with the contacts. We spent all that money on those contacts. Right. So that will, you know, open your eyes. Because my first thought, you know, when you get imperious, you know, I really... <laughs> You're right. Yeah, nice. so, but, you know, bring it down. And so the eyes in the camera. No, it's a very physical yes. performance you yes. bring to it. And I, uh, you had a certain stance I noticed that you you used for Silic that was rather lovely. You know, I was looking at old YouTube videos because I, I, it's all a blur, you know, because so much of my time in those contexts was sitting around the set right. with my eyes closed. I don't even know if you guys were there, but, you know, and then having to be led around because you can't right. see. Huh, but uh, I, I looked at these YouTube videos and you know what? I was kind of impressed, you know, and uh, and I noticed the eyes look great. And then I thought, but the teeth, you know, what, say what you will about me. I have very pretty teeth. And I go, <laughs> it kind of was an anomaly to see this alien with pretty teeth. But then, but then I was also standing, I had a, like a belly and I thought, oh dear, you know, aliens oh, don't have bellies. I will <laughs> say, uh, well, really? you've lost that point. I have lost you that point. You have lost that point. You, man, For those of you only it. listening in, he really has the body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a 16 year old I, I want to show you. But I dare not. You look great, John. Oh, Erica. I you really do. Thank you. She's not paid. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. 
Obviously, this wasn't your first job on Star Trek. Um, to talk us back. Who did you meet first? Rick and Brandon back in the day? Oh, and- geez. Who did I meet? I mean, David Livingston was my first oh. connection. Was yes. he? Was he? Yes. Right. And God bless him. Yeah, you know. How did you... Who was your first director? I think he was my first director. And he kept, you know... Um, you know how we love auditioning. I didn't have to audition. He just kept making me offers for different characters. So I worked with him about three or four times, you know, in different incarnations, you know. What was the first uh, start? Was it Deep Space Nine or was it? Oh, no, it was Next Voyager. Generation. Next I, was I, way uh, back when. I tortured uh, LeVar Burton. Did uh, you? Yes, yes. Huh? You and took his glasses off. I took his put glasses them on took off, them off. <laughs> put them on. I tried them on myself. <laughs> Spat in them a little. <laughs> oh, uh, were you in prosthetics then? or <clears throat> I was, uh, geez, was I Romulan? I just had the ear, you right. know, but not as severe. Not, not as, full on. No, no, no. Right. It only took Did like we ever get to half. see you as you on Star Trek? Well, you actually, uh, the last episode of um, Enterprise, I, I, you know, I was a shapeshifter, a Suleiman, and I got to shapeshift into human. Uh, yes, and we shot uh, on the Paramount you know, back lot there. On and, uh, season four, last episode. I haven't gotten there yet. Yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, so talking of plays, yes. I believe you're in one at the moment. I am? Who told you? Um, uh, no, I am, yes. A Little Dicky Bird. A Little Dicky Bird. Yes, I'm doing a show at the Odyssey Theater on the west side of Los Angeles, which is not a fun drive from Los Feliz to no. the, the west That's side. That's work. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, but hey, that's another story. Uh, yeah, I'm doing the show called It's Alive. It's Alive! And uh, we, um, me and my... Uh, writing partner, if you want to call him that, David Schweitzer, collaborator from way back. We uh, wanted to create something in August of 2020, you know, when the, during the pandemic uh, at the Odyssey, you know, to celebrate the resiliency of theater, you know, you can, you know. So you didn't sit it's around alive. the house scratching your ass and drinking whiskey in the morning well, like I did. <laughs> it wasn't my idea to do this. David Schweitzer, he pitched the idea to Beth. So God bless. I blame it all on him. Um, but I said, what the, you know, I'm not... Nobody's acting, nobody's doing anything. Right. So I started writing. So, but anyways, month after month, tick, 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 postponement. And it's like, uh, you know, I started to write about COVID and, you know, all the conspiracy theories going on and created this little mini opera. But, you know, events keep changing. That's the problem with doing these time specific right. pieces. You know, it's like, I, uh, you know, I've had to change it. So, anyways, we're doing it now at the Odyssey for a five week run. And it's been great, been getting great reviews. And uh, of course, World War III had to break out oh, now, right, you know. Yeah. I, I make a comment during the show. I just, you know, as soon as the shit in Ukraine happened, I go, I called Dave. And I said, well, we need to cancel the show. It just feels so irrelevant. Right. You know? But he made a point. I mean, in a way, we're shining a little light on how the seeds of tyranny and misinformation can kind of sprout anywhere like this country, you know. And also, I think theater... Nobody's been in a theater for two no, years. I, I was going to come to that. And, exactly. and the people who come, even though they have to wear masks and it looks like a Halloween yeah. party gone horribly wrong, but they're so grateful for the most part yeah. to, to be there and to like, it's a communal experience. Yeah. And that's why theater still exists. And why right. just, yeah. uh, I mean, we felt the same way in some respect, how silly it was to be, you know, pretending we were on a spaceship after 9-11 to get yeah. back, not, uh, to, not but, to dwell too much. But, you know, for that 40 minutes that someone tuned in, to watch that show at that time, it was an escape. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that right. is a service. Right. Oh, it is not a to service. blow a horn too loud or, or to I'll say your- this. When 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 you got the job, and to me, when I when I got Enterprise, I thought this was, you know, the the opportunity of a lifetime for a professional actor being in LA. You've got a show, you're on. And 9-11 happened, and I felt hollow. Mm-hmm. I felt, what am I doing? What what difference could I make? It's not doing this mm. at all. I got on the phone with my dad and my, and I, I shared this with him and he said, I, you're wrong. You're wrong. You are giving whoever wants, whoever needs hmm. to pay attention to what your story is. You're giving them an hour. And that was, yeah. You're giving them that with hour. commercials. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and then he was like, no, 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 no. What you're, you, what you are is a storyteller. Yeah. yeah. Tell those stories. You know. And let those stories land where they will. Yes, yeah. And and not to sound hackneyed or yeah, but no, it's it's true. It, yeah. There's a service there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and after and your father told told you this, you asked for more money, right? I did. I said, <laughs> Dad, I can't pay rent. <laughs> no, you got a big bump in salary from uh, from uh, Rick Berman. Over yeah. there. Yes. Rick called up and said, I think that was oh, fantastic. That was, you yeah, called yeah. your dad. And we've we've seen this have face on at the conventions. People coming up to the table and say, you know, you helped me through one of the worst periods of my life, and, and it can get pretty heavy. It happened you know, on the cruise. I mean, this happens, many divorces. This happens <laughs> every time I'm at a convention. And this is an interesting thing about that is that, you know, somebody will walk up and say, um, for instance, uh, I was having a very hard time in my life. And um, 
I waited a week to make a decision about what I was going to do for your show to come back. Right. And then it's humbling. I mean, it's, wow. it, is. it is. It's, it's totally it's humbling. Totally, and you know? and uh, not a little. I don't know. One gives thanks that. Yeah. Uh, right. And it, it it just makes you feel like you've done something. You know relevant right exactly. sometimes so but i life. wanted to ask you you've done a lot of one man shows right yeah was that initially what you were doing or did you when oh. you came here i came here to go to acting school from cleveland i drove cross country when i was 24 you know and uh so I, they american academy of dramatic arts was opening right. up, uh, their west coast branch and they must have been desperate i i never really acted before but i prepared <laughs> a monologue and they accepted me and so i drove my volkswagen out and i you know for two years i got the basics and then afterwards, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. So I, I kept studying, you know. I started to study improv and the dance. I got it. Being, then voice, you know. I used to have like a four and a half octave voice. I that's why wow. I, when I started performing, that's you know I'd get up on bars basically, you know, kind of just <laughs> flashing all over the place. But anyways, you know, after all this study, you know, and I'm doing little theater, and I, I started performing in these like punk, you know clubs performance did you really? clubs. Right. and i get on you know like the first time i did i opened for edie massey the leg uh, not the leg the egg lady from pink flamingos i don't know if you oh know yes that. yes yeah. remember she's in the the, the, the pen the play pen right she's yanking for egg anyways <laughs> i opened for her they she had an act she was doing at a bar the one-way bar this kind of s m kind of punky club in, in silver lake very seedy. Anyways, I got on top of a bar. Why am I telling you this story? And I and I and I pull my pants down and I say, "There's no penis like so penis." And you know, because these were all punkers, and they throw bottles at you. Yeah, they right. didn't like it, so, so they want to fuck you. So is that all there is? But anyways, before do they could, better. Do, <laughs> better. Better. do better, do better than that, dude. But then I sang a, a Puccini aria, you know. Oh, it's years. Says, yes. Wow. Anyway, so nice. I have that came out of the one-eyed monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's a neat trick. <laughs> it's a little sound bump. <laughs> oh God. Hey, anyway. Again, boss. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm just jumping all over. But I started doing these shows, and they just kept getting bigger and weirder. And so I oh, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Somebody says, oh, you should apply for a National Endowment for the Arts. You can make five thousand bucks. This was in '89. Ah. I was doing a show called Bless Our Little Fishes that originated in a club thing where I did a live thing. And I had this thing where I urinated into a bowl. It's like, I'm praying, God, please, God. I came out drinking like a fish in a mermaid outfit. And anyways, uh, so there- could you, could, you, could you always re rely on yourself to have a pee at the uh, given well, moment? Well, it was a one-timer, but I, I ended up- Because <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is dry. Uh, I know. I, I'm sorry, I've dried. <laughs> I, I decided to do it as a run at, a, at the Th Tiffany Theater on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the yeah. Tiffany. Well, damn Shut it. the front door. Yeah, baby. My first job in L.A. All right. It's gone now. I know. It's I all know. gone. They tore it down. Yeah. So I applied for this uh, National Endowment for the Arts for this crazy show. And I could pee every time on cue. I, no kidding. Okay. It's, it's, it's a gift. I'm a good crier and a good peer. <laughs> Juggling, uh -huh. suspense fencing, horse riding, <laughs> peeing on cue. One of my special skills. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember yeah, special yeah, skills? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. What was your most unusual special skill? <laughs> well, I listed all of them. Oh, yeah. All of them. I, yeah. I, I was like, I can ride a horse and juggle and do magic all at the same time. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I got called out on a job one time, but that's a whole other story. Oh, shit. But, so you do, you do this. Yes, I do this. These crazy shows. And yes. anyway, I got the National Endowment for the Arts. And then, you know, Senator Jesse Helms, it was 1990, and all these conservative kind of religious politicians. They said, this is obscene. So was, they, was Tipper Gore a part of that, too? Tipper, or was it separate? Um, I, she had something to do with decency for something like protecting children from indecents like myself. Anyways, uh, uh, we got the grants and then because of the political pressure, they took away the funding and we went to the Supreme Court. You know, yes. we, we but let me ask case. you, so... so uh, well, hang on, don't make light of the Supreme... Uh, you went, no, I'm not. you I'm, physically what, went to the Supreme uh, Court? Everybody did except me because I, I was working on a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's an actor. But, but, a, but, a, but, a, but a government well, grant nice. being taken away was unusual, right? Yeah, they had never done that before. Right. Yeah, you know, to give funding and then take it away. What and sort of year was this then? What was this was nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. So it's still yes. effectively the eighties and still right. sort of throwback eighties. Right. So how did you wind up being part of the four? Well, because we had uh, all four performance artists had gotten the funding and then they took it away. So we became the NEA four. And it was three basically gay performance artists and Karen Finley, who liked to smear chocolate right, all right. over her body and everything. 
But she's more than that. They you know, took money away from her. <laughs> well, you know, in co- out of context, it's so you know, I got labeled, you know, the guy that masturbates on stage. I never masturbated on stage, or, or they, you know, like I'd go in for auditions and they go, you know, casting people would say, "Oh no, don't go peeing on the furniture," because you know, I got that was part of my show. <laughs> but um, I don't know, just labels, how people label you, you know. Yeah. Poor Karen got labeled the chocolate smeared lady, but you know, there was beautiful messages. I mean, we were really. It wasn't just to be obscene or, you know, shocking. There, there were great stories there. Well, too, it's, the, it's the sense of exactly what art is, which is to challenge, question, and, and wonder about who we are and what we're doing. Yeah, and people do it in different ways. Absolutely. You know? As Harry S. Truman said, one man's profanity is another man's philosophy. There you so go. Was, and then he said, we're going to drop that <laughs> exactly. goddamn bomb. Well, <laughs> some got to win, some got to lose. That's right. <laughs> but performance art was pretty huge in those early years, wasn't it? It was, and, uh, yes. I remember that's when I, when I showed up in L.A. and I remember being in Hollywood and seeing some extraordinary stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm kind of getting out now after right. this show. I think this is my last big oh, oh, hurrah. In, but yeah, in the early uh, 90s, late 80s, it was a yeah. heavy performance. It was a groundswell of it, wasn't it? But I do remember meeting a producer once, uh, Joel Stern from the Matrix Theater. I remember he said, so you're a performance artist, huh? Uh-huh. He says, what does that mean? You can't act? And that's what <laughs> most people think when they hear, you know, performance <laughs> art. You know? That's hilarious. It's never gotten me a Hollywood job. I no, nobody's ever come see my show. Right. But if you get press, like, you know, after this whole NEA thing happened, Stephen Bochco, you know, I right. got, that's when I got my first series, Murder really? One in 1995. I played the, you know, the gay secretary, which was, you know, there weren't a lot of gay characters on. But how TV far did you go into uh, um, the, you know, Supreme Court judgment about this? And how, how, how involved were you? With- well, we had lawyers, you know, obviously, you know, um, so it was weird. I mean, all these three other guys, you know, the NEA four, they're so much smarter than me. They're, they're all, you know, they're all college educated. And I'm just kind of a primal, intuitive guy, you know. And I, I went on the Oprah Winfrey show. None of them would, but I was thinking, well, you know, I'm acting now. And be, <laughs> you know, any publicity is good publicity. And this got you on her show, so to speak. Right, I mean, right. There was a natural, there was an interest. To well, all of them, it, right? it was a freak show. She had, you know, the NEA four, you know, you know, decadent art, you know, being right. defunded. And, and then they had an a, a, a anti-abortion. And the Jim Rose sideshow. Oh, they, it was just like everybody. We all got the- cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Okay. Uh, let's go back to some yes. acting. Okay. Uh, yes. I saw on the notes, oh. you did an episode of Seinfeld. Yes. Which one? I, mean, I was a huge fan in my day of the Seinfeld. It was their first season. I think it was like show number five or six. And uh, it was called George Costanza has a heart attack. And and I remember working on it and and not, not Keith Richards, Michael Richards. Uh, All right. <laughs> yes. I wish it was Keith. <laughs> yes, and so does he. So, <laughs> yes. uh, yep. But he was writing it down. He was riding a bicycle, you know, there, and, and he says, "I'm not buying it. They're going to cancel because the series wasn't doing well. He, no, they, 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 they're going to cancel. Years were tough. Yeah. 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 So hey. But, and then, yes. but I want to ask about yes. Howard the Duck. Oh my God, we're, we're really digging <laughs> deep. Are, because, but it, because Howard the Duck was- I a, don't even know what that is. Howard the <laughs> Duck Good had a you. moment in time when they were about to sort of like, uh, they were figuring out like technology and how to- This was a movie, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And Howard the Duck was meant to be just this blockbuster. Right. That, George that, Lucas that, produced yeah, it. Yeah, that yes. laid a turd. <laughs> oh, big turd. Ruined it, a lot of careers. It, so. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, okay. we're going to move on to some fan questions oh, uh, uh, for uh, you right. and all of us. Oh. And uh, Erica, I think yes. you have um, them set up for us. Have we figured out the name of the avocado the- tree yet? Oh, well, we have, haven't we? My vote is Floyd. <laughs> Floyd. I like Floyd the avocado We could take tree. votes, yeah. but I think we've named it Wash. Maybe that could be its middle name. Wash Floyd. Wash Floyd. Floyd. Wash Floyd avocado. Oh. Well, uh, we got a lot of uh, uh, fans online asking us to name the tree. Uh, and our favorite suggestion uh, was to name it Hoban Washburn, uh, the pilot of the Serenity on the show Firefly, uh, also the movie Serenity. Uh, so we're going to call it Wash in honor of that great character whose who's famous quote from that show and from that movie uh, was, I'm a leaf <coughs> on the wind. Watch how I soar. I think it should be called Wash Floyd's Clothes. I think you all. <laughs> how about that? You all really need to just go to the British audience to name anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's right. Boaty, boaty, boat face. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll come up with something good yeah, for you. Right. Won't well, you, lads? I like Wash Floyd. All right, so uh, questions from fans. <laughs> okay, what do we so, have? so the first question isn't actually a question, but you guys got so many of the uh, similar comments about it. So 
I'm going to turn it into one. Okay. <laughs> uh, at Kiki Natalia on Twitter, uh, she made a comment saying, looking forward to John Fleck's conversation. Like I said the other day, I loved to hate Silic. What a character. So the question is, what did you love and what did you hate about playing Silic? What did I love about Silic? Um, after 18 hours, I'd get to take my makeup off. That's oh. what I love the most. No. Uh, what did I love? You know what? I, I was looking at old clips last night and I goes, oh, you know, I just love the role. I, I love to act. You know, you get a part, you know, and it, it, under a pile of makeup. But it's still, I don't know, it just was fun. And, and I love the relationship I had with Scott. And uh, I was going to ask you about yeah. some, uh, tell us some Scott stories, because oh, what a guy. Yes. I mean, he made those years joyous oh, for you us. Know, what a kind, decent yeah. guy, yeah. you know, and, and because he's started in the theater too. I swear people yes. who start in the theater are just more human with one another, yeah. you know, and he was just so receptive. And, yeah. Uh, I also think that, you know, our shows attract theater actors. Hmm. Yeah. To be able to do it, you have to have done some studying and knowing how to uh, carry a speech yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and live that on, on a stage. And I think- And that make that world, which is somewhat, you know, we've talked briefly about this already, but it's a sort of Shakespearean world in space, if you will, yeah. in right. many respects. And you have to have some sort of, you know, um, understanding of that. But, but, you know, it's funny when I auditioned for Silica, you know, in the room with Junie Lowry and Rick and all the people. And, and I, Ron Surma. Uh, oh, Ron yeah. Surma. Oh, oh John, you're uh, doing great. <laughs> Back in the days when we used to audition, in rooms <gasps> and be able to turn it on in front of people oh, and impress. I know I miss those days, to be honest. I really do. You know, I had a big little boo-boo right in the middle of my thing because I was talking, you know, as John talks about com coming to somewhere. And I said, oh, no, we're coming to. And I, I stopped and I, got, and I said, we're going to keep the cameras rolling, but we do not say coming in <laughs> outer space. <laughs> We say coming. Yes. And then I went. And you know what? That was that in life person yeah. auditioning yeah. in a room instead of self taping. Yeah. You know, that is so cold and inhuman. And right. Boy, self tapes. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm diverging. Well, how do you feel about <laughs> oh, self tapes? God, it's all attitude, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, I kind of like it. Well, you know, there's something great about it. You, we can do as many takes. We can. I like the fact you don't have to drive over to the west side at <laughs> <That's another laughs> yeah, five know. on Friday afternoon exactly, in your little exactly. black dress. But exactly. there is something about you are <laughs> playing a room. Right. right. You know. <laughs> well, and also, you know, self tape, at least when in rooms, I felt like maybe you're up against 10 other guys or, you know, we're all in there for But now it's self of tapes they must get hundreds well, here's of them. The, yeah there's hundreds oh, they do. yeah and what 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 you don't get with the tape is you don't get that pizzazz moment in the room where you know you just did it in front of seven people right who are all the decision makers and you were off book and you nailed it yes yes and it's a showtime yes and right. you don't they there's that's missing but just so you know for the audience um before COVID, what we did was we would walk into an audition and you would have a casting director, a camera, sometimes a producer or two, but you would- Certainly on the, if you were down to the wire for a proper big job, it yeah. was a room full of people. Right. There'd be right. half so, a dozen so people you, in there. You were walking into a scenario where you were making sure you were communicating something. What happens now is, you know, I can put a camera against my wall and do- 47 takes of something. And then I think. God knows he and then, has. And then, I've read with him. Oh my God. <laughs> it's epic. But what winds up happening is that you think. Really? One more. <laughs> you think that you've done something uh -huh. that is the best you could do. But that's. It's 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 a it's a very it's a it's a unique you don't know thing. how it's received. It's an obscure no. environment. It, it, yeah. It's uh, and and if you're not in a room with people, if you're a storyteller, your job is to tell stories yeah. in front of people and to make them land. Yeah. And if you don't have that opportunity, you are operating in a vacuum. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the hard part about this. I think that's what that's what people don't like. I actually like operating in a vacuum. I have to say that. <laughs> I just like operating. Your voice gets so much sexier. I, 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 I got very close to Is that to your vacuum voice? voice? I'm, I'm operating. I like right it. now, I'm operating in a vacuum here right now. It's funny, speaking of voices, if I may, but because uh -huh. I, I used to talk a lot, like, you know, when you play aliens with this very low voice. Mm -hmm. So I thought I had to talk like that in all my auditions <laughs> after that. And that's why, yeah. why aren't I booking you? And finally said, John, just be your just, fucking yeah. Say your, use God. your voice. I don't know, Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. Rather well with that voice. Oh, is that really for thirty-five you know, years? You don't think that's he did as real 
Every, voice. He's done every performance he's <laughs> yeah, ever given. He actually talks like this <laughs> off stage. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it is. I mean, like, I have to. You do. You notice it, and particularly in episodic, people are always talking in this kind of whispered voice. Yes. Could you speak up just a little <laughs> yeah. bit? Oh. I can. I'm being very serious right now. Oh, that's yeah. right. Uh, it's dramatic. John. Voice. Yes. John. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Oh, my yeah. God. People want to know what you hate about Plain Select. Oh, God. You're still holding on to that. <laughs> I'll, I'll wrap it up real fast. The only thing I hated was, uh, you know, hours and hours of makeup in this tight outfit. And then if you had to go to the bathrooms, somebody yeah. had to accompany you to zip you up in the bag. It was like a very humbling experience. Yeah. Mm. And we're not trying to pin you down. There's so many fans who have been saying, oh, my God, I love to hate Silic. I love... <sighs> I love him, but he's such a terrible uh, alien. Uh, you know, I got to say, looking at, you know, my YouTube videos last night, I was saying, you know, I, I was kind of sexy. I, I, I could see the <laughs> loving and hating me at the same time. So, um, so anyway, I mean, but overall, you you enjoyed the experience with oh, us. Oh, you I know. Mean, it was, so it was a nice set, wasn't it? It was a nice set. Uh, you know, like I said, I did so many different episodes, you know, different characters. And I don't know. I just enjoyed it. It's Fun being, as you know, being a series regular or recurring, it, you do feel like part of the family. Yeah, and yes. you feel like, oh, what I'm doing, it that's important. You know, it keeps it part of the family. Let me ask you, what's the favorite role you've ever had? <gasps> oh boy, do you have one uh, in TV or film? Or no, anything. Oh, anything. Anything. Yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. I gotta say, in terms of film, probably the best scene I ever had was with Michael Douglas and falling down. You know, uh, uh, and that good was film. like ninety three. What scene was that? Oh, I, I, I cost him in MacArthur's Park, and you know, I, yes. I say I'm a vet, you know, or something. I right, he throws an apple. I remember that scene. I didn't, I didn't put it together that that was you, but yeah, that's a great scene. Joel Schumacher working with him. Right, boy, those were the days. You know, early nineties, especially after the NEA shit storm uh, happened. All of a sudden, people started calling me in out of curiosity, mostly. And then all of a sudden I started booking Joel Schumacher, uh, you know, I auditioned for him. Marion Doherty. Do you remember her? Right, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Warner Brothers. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, she brought me in for Big several time casting things. Yes. And, uh, and I remember Joel Schumacher, I did it. And like we talked about being live after I left, I just, wow, I felt really good. He actually came out. He says, you know, you did a damn good job. I want you. I never had, that's never happened since. <laughs> but that was, that made it really memorable for me. What else have I got here in the notes? <laughs> oh. Um, oh, yes. Yes, you wrote a theatre piece, oh, and I'm going to let you say this. <laughs> Nothing. Now that we live in these times. Um, freaks and... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Can we say that even now in this day and age? I don't know. Uh, on our show? Freaks I'm and the F sure. word. Okay. Yeah. Not okay. the F word. We well, you know, I love to be a little controversial. So this was from... I, I, I was telling Eric and Mark and Chris that I, I did this little bit within the show, and the, the show was even more of a horrific title called Nothing Beats a Pussy. That was the name of my... My, my I piece. like that. Oh my and, god! And this was a. This was a. I think that's fantastic. Apparently, we can't say this, people. <laughs> but but the genesis of that was what my father gave me. It was his, my my heart to heart with my father. I just moved to California and I went back to California. I was just getting into exploring my sexual, my ambient sexual being, or whatever. And I remember it was the early seventies. I came back with these big sunglasses. And my dad was a big macho guy, you know, drinker and carpenter guy. He sat me down. He says, "He says you're not a fruit." Are you? I go, no. What makes you think that? <laughs> and he says, well, let me tell you something. And he, and he took just a, you know, like, okay, dad's really thinking. He says, nothing beats a pussy. <laughs> and that was it, man. And I go, wow, that was my one heart to heart. So I wrote a show based around this. Oh, That's brilliant. My <laughs> God. <laughs> and, Thanks, Dad. And part of my show was uh, how I made a living turning uh, lemons into lemonades. I, I started playing freaks, all these aliens. And then uh, when I did Murder One, I played the gay guy. So I, I, I was just getting offers to play, you know, gays. So I, I wrote this little part, part called Freaks and Fags. And I'm laughing all the way to the bank. You know, uh, I'd, but, uh, I'd, I'd sign pictures and s s try to sell them to people, stuff like that. But nothing. <laughs> so did you find, though, that um, initially, was it as a result of the NEA4 that you uh, you were sort of, I guess, compartmentalized into a... A, a freaky kind of role. I didn't say that. <laughs> but you were but, thinking that I, I could tell. 
Was that freaky mean? fag actor. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, uh, well, hey, I didn't play a freaky fag guy in Joel Schumacher's, uh, you know, thing. Uh, no, it was just, uh, but, but I, I, I turned some good, some series roles. You know, I, I turned on like Jeffrey, you know, that play Jeffrey that yeah, we had at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. They wanted that was on Mama, wasn't and it? I said, yeah. I don't want to play too many gay roles. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a serious actor. Yeah, I'm, not, I, I'm well, not an animal. I'm a human being. That's right. <laughs> We've all done that. I remember uh, just after Enterprise and I was like, saying to my agent, I was like, you know what? I don't want to right now do some sci-fi roles. I just want to play yeah. some, some some straight characters. Don't you wish? And then this yeah. next audition was yeah. Michael in Stargate Atlantis, and I was like, I think that's great. I'm going for that. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love How much character. money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Recurring, fantastic. Oh, yes. I'm there for you. All right, so uh, we're gonna go to some. Trivia, right? Erica? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Okay. All right. So we uh, play a little game. By yeah. the way, oh, uh, we're terrible at this. Oh, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> words. Okay. Uh, and Mark seems to be the ringer. Uh, all right. Well, it's you okay. three against Mark. So. Uh, okay. All three of us okay. against Mark. That helps, Star right? Trek alumni versus producer versus, Mark. Versus, right. versus the sentient. We're gonna first? We're going to start with Dominic. Okay. And it's, it, most of them are multiple choice, so not to worry. Dominic, which of the following was not a founding species of the United Federation of Planets? A, Vulcans, B, Andorians, C, Bajorans, D, Tellarites. Mark. I'm going to go with not Vulcans, not the Andorians. What were the other ones? Those guys. The Bajorians. Ba Bajorans and Tellarites. I'm going to go with, but not a founding member of the Federation. So they're, they're all, that's of, I mean, would they have let the Andorians in given that the Vulcans hated them? Oh, that's it's a, a deep tough dive. call, that's isn't it? That's a deep it? dive you're taking. That's a tough call. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Andorians. Mark. <laughs> Damn, it's the Bajorians. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Bajorans. Uh, uh, Mark. It's the Bajorans. Uh, yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, well, that's some didn't show messed up stuff. <laughs> that's right. That was a trick question. Oh, John, you're next. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me. Okay. What real world terrorist organization were the Suleban named after? <sighs> Oh, come on. The Taliban. Yes. Yay! Woo! What do I win? Money? Yeah. Uh, no, you, you get to watch though. the loser mow the lawn and drink That's right, exactly. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the name Suleban was coined by Rick Berman after the Taliban months before the September 11th attacks. According to Berman, the Taliban was just a mysterious, exotic name to me. There was something incredibly dramatic about the name. It was like something out of a Sinbad story. <laughs> Okay, Connor. Uh huh. Your turn. Mm -hmm. In Broken Bow, Captain Archer gets shot in the leg. What seemingly inappropriately named creature does Dr. Flox use to help heal the wound? <sighs> a, a cauterizing starfish. B, an osmotic starfish. C, an osmotic eel. Or D, a cauterizing eel. Oh, it's, it's one oh, of that's two. a lot of the same. It's one or two. I, I think it's A. It's, two. it's the second one, it. isn't it? No. It's, it's not a starfish. It's not a... It's an eel. It's... Mark. It's not it an eel. Mark knows. It's not a keel. Yeah. Damn. Uh, even though it looks like a four-armed sea star, the little creature is called an osmotic eel. Oh. Well, see, that it was my thing. Like I, I, thought, I thought it was a starfish. And wow. Wow. <laughs> that was another trick question. Oh, yeah. boo. So that's 2-1. Um, okay, Mark. <laughs> there were two original series episodes that mentioned Corbomite. One was the Corbomite Maneuver. What was the other? The Corbomite Incident. Uh, I, oh, well, there's a multiple choice. <laughs> okay, go ahead with the <laughs> multiple choice. Does it even matter? <laughs> a, Obsession. B, Dagger of the Mind. C, The Deadly Years. D, The City on the Edge of Forever. Yeah, Mark. Well, he's not yep. so sure yeah, right? on this one. Starting up the lawnmower. What are they again? <laughs> <laughs> A, Obsession. B, Dagger of the Mind. C, The Deadly Years. Or D, The City, on, city the on the Edge of forever. forever. Is that what you're guessing? Yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong. <gasps> yes. Oh, gosh. It's, uh, I mean, does, does someone else want to guess? Is I think Dagger of the Mind. I'm sorry, you guys. Wow, oh, man. Oh, nuts. <laughs> it's the deadly years. Oh, deadly years. So, uh, so the resolution of the plot of this episode involves a bluff by Captain Kirk, who refers to an imaginary piece of equipment he calls a Corbomite device. It's what Galaxy Quest is based on. Oh. No. Dominic, are you ready for uh -huh. yours? 
In the third season episode, E2, Archer and the crew encounter another Enterprise NX-01 that had traveled to the year 2037 and was now crewed by their descendants. What was the name of the executive officer, Archer's great-granddaughter? Oh, my word. Uh-huh. A, Erica. Not me, but her. <laughs> B, Acilia. C, Karen, or D, Margaret? God, I hope it's Karen. <laughs> I'm hoping it's Margaret, actually. Okay. It would be great. Uh, and her boyfriend, Ken. <laughs> um, I do. I'm going. Margaret. I, 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 I feel, feel Margaret. Margaret. I'm going with D, Margaret. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. Karen? It's, Mar- no. Acilia. It's, it's. Karen. Karen! <laughs> you gonna, changed your mind. I was going to steal that. The solution of the episode's p- plot conflict is brought about when Karen asks to speak to the manager. Oh, Karen. Karen. <laughs> John, uh, in the episode The Expanse, an alien device attacks Earth, cutting a trench into the Earth's surface between which two places? We just talked about this. A, France and Morocco. B, Florida and Venezuela. <laughs> C, Italy and Libya, or D, Louisiana and Mexico? B. <laughs> okay, I'm getting some vibrations here. Okay. I think uh, I, Venezuela's in the news right now with the oil uh-huh. and Florida. Oh, uh-huh. they just passed I like that. where you're going with this. I like yeah, where you're yeah, going with yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, I'll go for... Um, uh, what was the other ones? No, I'll go for Florida, Venezuela. Yes! yes. He wow. helped me on. <laughs> You're right. But hey, I got two. Hey, hey. The alien attack causes the death of seven million people, of which Commander Tucker's sister is one, courtesy of Silic, Captain Oh, Arch- and don't we know it. Uh. Captain Archer <laughs> learns that a race called the Zindi were behind the attack, and they are planning the destruction of Earth. Wow. Connor, this one's for you. Oh, no. What was to Paul's mother's occupation? <laughs> a <laughs> oh sure uh-huh a captain of a vulcan science ship b instructor of a vulcan science academy c medical doctor to high command or d spiritual leader oh it's b or d it's b or d what was b again what was b again yeah uh, b is instructor at vulcan science academy i'm gonna go with my instinct which is mechanic <laughs> 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 a mechanic uh, off of that i'll go with uh d spiritual leader uh nuts b isn't it I i'm never. still not I mowing thought... my own lawn i'm still not in the, lawn, the, lawn, obviously. <laughs> in, in the episode home to paul gets married so that her mother can get her position at the science academy back Tay less to paul's mother was in fact an instructor at the Vulcan Science Academy. Yes, she was. I have a new question. If we want to, if we want to substitute <laughs> yeah, throw it, throw it out there. Should we? Yeah, yeah sure. I think so. I'm going to give Connor a new one. All right. Oh, okay. Which species of Zindi was God extinct in the show? <laughs> oh, I know this one. <laughs> oh, Mark, you're obnoxious. Can I have a slap? <laughs> Which species of of Zindi? Well, of Zindi was extinct in the show. What do you mean species? They're they're, they're the Zindi. Is, a, there more, is there more than the one Zindi? <laughs> Mark is a, waving his hand. A, insectoids, B, aquatics, C, avians, or D, oh, primates. Aquatics. It's not I the aquatics, because they're it's, in it. It's primates. No. God damn it. Mark, it's the insects. Mark, Mark, Mark. 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 Oh. The avians. Yes. The we avians. Only, the only ever seen a school Zindi. of avian during the show. Oh, damn. Well, I, I wanted to give it to you, Connor. Um, yeah, you gave it to him good. Can, yeah. Can, yeah. can you still? <laughs> <laughs> Would you please? Mark. God damn Okay. It. Uh, this is the last question, unless we have a tie somehow. Mark, we, what is Captain Kirk's military serial number? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mark. Jeez, Louise. What is that? <laughs> I could. I have no idea. 777? Seven, seven, seven? Um, I'm going to give you multiple choice. Okay. Oh. A, 33443555.5. Four, four, oh B, 41353535. C, 9370175. Oh, anyway, seven, that's my phone number. Stop. <laughs> stop. 8675301. 9, 0176CEC or D 91111 Earth. Mm-hmm. D. It's got to be the 9111 Earth, isn't it? 91111 Earth. It's, it's not. Oh, yeah. geez. I have no idea. Anyway, I still won three to two. Oh, wow. Well, you're so proud of yourself. It's, it's, it's uh, C 9370176CEC. 
It's bloody annoying. Nine three seven zero one seven six. He's sitting right next to the answers on a piece of paper. See them. This is the first time I've been sitting close to her before, so this is my only experience, and I see what I see. I say we need all new questions. We need to separate. All right, guys. Well, producer Mark. Uh, wins. Connor and Dominic are tied for losing, so both of them have to do promos at the end of the episode. Oh, okay. ah, boo. Oh. Well, how many different episodes or series have you been on? Uh, what do you mean? In my whole life? Uh, TNG, Voyager. Oh, uh, Star Trek yeah. series. Um, everyone but the original one, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, Next Generation, Deep Space, Voyager. People always want to know were there mishaps or blunders or did you have any oh uh, i i you know not big blunders but i remember kate mulgrew getting very mad on one i played a junk dealer and, and laying on the floor they, you know they loved to kill me i think i was dying and she came over but she kept tripping on all the junk and she kept and she and it was late it was the last you know martini shot and she just kept tripping on the shit and she's <laughs> literally fuck, 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 you know she got some, but anyways we got this out. but she was sweet as could be but you know you get a little irritable after sure. you know when you're carrying a series and you have to work all these That's hard right. days oh, and yes, all thing. that money. And all that but money. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, any other mishaps? You know, I played this other character out in the desert somewhere with a big headpiece. I don't know what race it was or <laughs> alien, but it was really hot. It was like 110 degrees and you're under this lake. And, and my dripping. eyes are dripping. Right. And it, it was, you know, I kept tripping because you can't see. And I remember one of the co-stars, I forget who it was, uh, uh, an attractive young blonde lady. Um, anyway, she kept, she couldn't that stop, but just became hysterical. So it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and I understand. I would have done the same thing. You know, but I, that's the only mishap. Besides the time I shat my pants because I no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please, well, do tell. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Speaking of, Besides the time I shat my pants. Full scene day in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> What's that bulge around Silly's ass? Those are the pens, baby. Because you have to get zipped up to get in and out. That's I just hilarious. Give you the pens. We'll change it at the end of the day. Uh, well, Connor, was... Connor brought a game to us a couple of weeks ago that we would like to start playing again. Uh, oh, yeah. So I think I invented this, but I might be wrong about this. So I played this game for years and years and years. The question is this, you're on a deserted island. You are allowed three things. One, an author. Two, a musician, any band, single person. This is not, not to sleep with on the island. This no, is, no, this no, is no, you know, the music. E everything else is taken care of. It's like, it's like the Four Seasons minus three things. Okay. You've got everything in life except Every, for these you, three You've factors. got your protein. Okay. And, and the third is your dessert. Now, when I say dessert, I don't mean like, you know, you can pick. No, that one you can sleep with. Yeah. 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 You could, you know, you could pick, if you say uh, chocolate ice cream, all ice cream, uh -huh. all cake, uh -huh. all pie. All pie. So, yeah. so let's start with this. So, uh, John, you are are on a deserted oh, island yeah. you've got uh everything going you're alone uh -huh. for the rest of your life jeez oh, so it's your... not long. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, God. You had to rub that yeah. in. Hey, listen, buddy. You're not that far behind me. So uh, uh, let's start with this. John, who's your author? Oh, who is my author? God. Oh, my. Jeez, my heart's pounding. I know. I feel it's like a, it's, it's uh, a thing. Really... Pressure. You're uh, alone. Uh -huh. I'm alone. And who, who's your author? Oh, jeez. Who is my author? I read all these people and I can't remember who. Uh, okay, David Sedaris. I'll just say that. Okay. okay. I like his short stories. I like right. Sedaris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David yeah. Sedaris yeah. is yeah, yeah, your yeah. author. That's now, uh, what? who's your musician? <gasps> oh who is God. it? A, it's a band or, or you know, Mozart classical, or you know. whatever. Oh, geez. Uh, who would be my band? Boy. It's the rest of your <laughs> life. <laughs> and do you have to hear this band all the time? Yes, at the oh, playing really? place. Oh, my God. Well, they better be versatile. I, I'm uh -huh. going go with Pink Martini, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Martini. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, def yeah, yeah, okay, yeah That's yeah. not a bad yeah. choice. All right. So you've got David Sedaris and Pink Martini. This is a this very is a fantastic <laughs> island. <laughs> is this island pink? <laughs> well, it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to cap this off with your dessert. Oh, jeez. Uh -huh. Now, but this is only one night. I'm not going to eat this every night, am I? No, or? it's for the well, rest of your life on the island. But again, but again, if you choose something like ice cream, you get... All, all ice, ice cream. cream or yeah. all cake. Really kind or... of, wow, this is like Willy Wonka land. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Wow. Got your golden ticket. Oh, wow. To your oh, only oh, place God, for the God. rest of your life. <laughs> Whoa, boy, uh, sweets are wonderful. Well, uh, uh, um, uh, a baked Alaska. Nice. 
<laughs> have you ever heard of a baked Alaska? In fact, I the have. whole I island, have. the whole island could have. be a baked Alaska. But you, but you could also see, oh, oh my God. you no. could be living I, on baked Alaska. You could see, you see, anything with meringue. <laughs> yeah, how about that? I <laughs> was thinking like lemon meringue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. John Fleck has chosen uh, pink martini. Uh-huh. Sedaris, uh, David Sedaris uh, on Baked Alaska <laughs> and the Baked Alaska <laughs> meringue, anything meringue oriented. <laughs> but I have so much on this island. Well, John, uh, I just want to say what an absolute pleasure. Well, it has yeah. been. A pleasure. It has been yeah. having you. Um, I was rather uh, dreading this. No, but you know, I know. I mean, I, I know. We, we heard tell. No, uh, uh, I, I had so much fun, guys. Thank I'm you. Glad you Thank did. you so uh, much for coming. You, you were very warm and welcoming. And by the way, um, It's Alive, It's Alive is playing through the rest of the week. Uh, no, through March 20th. Through March 20th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we are going to post this uh, as of today to uh, go oh, see good. John's show. Mm-hmm. And uh, man... What a gift to have you here. Well, thank you yeah. so much. It's been a lovely yeah, seeing after all these years. Love. Yes, yes. Really. Well, no, and to actually see your face. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, again, uh, really, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. It was, it was a gift to have you here and uh, to share one, God, your your breadth of stories that you have from your oh, your 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 career as as an actor and a performer. Yeah, thank well, you for being One good thing here. about getting older, you got more stories. That's, to right. Tell, huh? That's right. Someone once said it, his little talent took him all the way from Cleveland oh. to the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> Which I couldn't go to because I was working on a TV yeah, that's show. Right. I, was, I was busy. God, well. I, I, all the way to the end of the pier. <laughs> I was Perhaps sellout. beyond. Oh, what a sellout I was. Uh, bless you, mate. Thank yeah. you. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks, John. Please come back, John. You bet, baby. Thank yeah. you. All right. Whee! Oh, that was fun, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank you for coming to my house uh, for today's show. And you, as always, Dom, for... Um, Thanks, mate. You know, being on the road with me. As Thanks always. for having us over, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to be here with everyone. great fun. And John yes. Fleck was fantastic. Wasn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, what a mensch, what a... Really, what an artist. Yeah, an actor's actor, again. And uh, I just love guys that can, and girls, actors that can just tell stories like that. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's always, uh, you know, there's nothing more fun than sitting at a table with them, having a couple of drinks. And, 100%, uh, yeah. And hearing all the stories. Yeah. Yeah. It's a breath of fresh air and a reminder of kind of what we do and why we yeah. do it. Yeah. And, uh, and also, Erica, thank you so much for thank all you, you do. And um, <laughs> as, as always, dear... Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Connor. And thank you, Dominic. And John was great. I he, thought he was going to take his shirt off, but. I, we, we were hoping. He, he, he almost got there, didn't he, he though? So he close. almost got I was there. Just like, just do it. God Come on, man. I gave him every opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Dom Anyways. almost did it for himself. <laughs> Anyway, bless you, bless Uh, you, bless bless all of you. you, Thank you for showing up. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Peace out. Cheers. If you liked our interview with John Fleck, like and subscribe to our channel.